It won't go away this time, but we can fight it. I imagined how my little war against cancer would go. We would launch a land attack in the form of chemo. But cancer would bomb from above. Radiation would stun the air command, but cancer's navy, disguised as side effects, would blockade ongoing treatment altogether. And so this fight would go until cancer and I were a couple of 12-year-old boy soldiers smoking cigarettes and shooting rifles wildly into the air. At the end, we'd fall on top of each other in a heap, grateful to be done. Sitting in waiting rooms, I watched other people's skirmishes. The fashion executive I met in the spring sporting Louis Vuitton shoes and a Chanel suit. I ran into her again at Christmas in a wheelchair, wearing sweatpants and sneakers. She was planning her memorial service. Only vintage champagne will be served. I mean, I'm only going to die once. The Brooklyn fireman arriving late for his first chemo in heavy black and yellow turnout trousers and boots, a little too round in the paunch. <laughs> he looked like a giant bee in the treatment room. <laughs> the brass didn't make him stop working until the brain metastases caused seizures, but he continued going to the firehouse for dinner until he forgot how to get there. Were you there at 9-11? Oh, shit, yeah. What was worse, cancer? 9-11. Can't even remember where I live anymore, but I remember every minute on 9-11. Wouldn't you think a rap bastard like cancer would give me a break? Waiting for doctor's appointments was like watching time-lapse photography. They all died. I paid lip service to hope and thanked friends for offered prayers, but deep down I knew it was only a matter of time for me. The cancer was in my bones. Vertebrae crumbled and fissures erupted in my pelvis. The pain was unremitting. I asked my oncologist, how long do I have? It's slowing. But the pain is worse. I know. Bone mets hurt, but the fractures are healing. Well, how long do I have? I'm not God. My doctor refused to discuss my longevity. No matter how many different ways and times I asked, I settled into the cadence of cancer. Blood work before infusions, infusions before scans, radiation daily, more blood work, more scans. Improvement didn't elate me, and regression didn't depress me. I pitied patients with metastatic disease whose moods were dictated by their test results. Hope is where you hide when there is none, I told myself. My bones healed. I regained my strength. Well, there was lots to do before I died. Organize photo albums, clean closets, discuss love, sex, and heartbreak with my barely pubescent daughters, write letters to be read after I was gone, knit sweaters for grandchildren I would never meet. But I had a lot of things not to do also, Christmas cards were the first to go. And then class reunions, PTA meetings, thank you notes. Dinner parties hosted by boars. Parties with bad food and cheap booze. Well, I excused myself from any event that wasn't fabulous, realizing that family and friends would, well, they might be miffed, but who could stay angry at someone dying from cancer? <laughs> Daughters, husbands, parents. That became the pecking order for my attention. I picked up my daughters from school daily, and I made my husband's favorite meals. I flew cross-country to visit my ailing parents every six weeks. It was difficult cramming a lifetime's worth of love and caretaking into a tightly packed schedule, but I tried. And as for me, I ate dessert first, every chance I got. And I stopped coloring my hair. When my winter coat frayed, I refused to replace it but my cancer kept getting better. Even the doctors were amazed. It slowed, then it stabilized, and then it melted away. Your scans are clear. But I still have cancer, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't really ever go away. You said that. I did, but remission happens sometimes. Remission? For how long? Oh, there you go again. 
with a how long, I am not God. You worked hard for this, go, celebrate. Celebrate? I was outraged. I had spent the last seven years of my life preparing for death. I was overweight and unkempt. My wardrobe was in shambles. I'd burned more bridges in the last few years than I'd built. <laughs> this was not the plan. You'd think a rat bastard like cancer would give me a break. Do what she's supposed to do. Now I had a lot more to do. I had to get a job, order dinner in, let my daughters walk home from school, and lose weight, color my hair, buy a new frickin' coat. <laughs> 